guys and welcome back to my channel hopefully everyone has enjoyed the holiday season and a happy new year to all of you let's get into the tea today though because it's hot there has been a lot that's been going on with andrew tate and brother tristan and likely unless you live under a rock you're aware of the recent arrest that the tate brothers have faced in romania under allegations of human trafficking and r word when researching andrew tate or simply googling him to see what comes up it's always very difficult to find any coverage on him that isn't biased in one direction or the other. You can always very much tell how the author of an article or video feels about Tate on a personal level, and more often than not, that can muddy the waters of information. While our personal opinions on Andrew Tate here on the Hot Tea channel might not be favorable ones, we certainly do not intend to present any false information simply just to back up our own agendas. So let's talk about the recent news news and the facts. The tea on the arrest that happened just before 2022 came to a close was basically allegedly due to a back and forth on Twitter between Andrew and Greta Thunberg where Andrew made a joke about all of the cars he owns and the emissions that they put off. Greta responded with a subtle jab which triggered Andrew to make a response video that apparently gave away his location being in Romania due to a visible pizza box from a local restaurant which then led to his arrest by Romania and police. I'm not actually mad at Greta. Please bring me pizza and uh, make sure that these boxes are not recycled. Thank you. So I'm not actually mad at Greta, right? Because she doesn't realize she's been programmed. She doesn't realize she's a slave of the matrix. She thinks she's doing good. Now, people are also saying that the pizza box had nothing to do with the move on behalf of the Romanian police and the investigation on the Tate brothers has been active since around April of 2022. Greta, however, couldn't miss out on the opportunity to hand out one last jab at Andrew Tate tweeting, this is what happens when you don't recycle your pizza boxes. That's what apparently happened in short, so that's that on that, and now let's get into the hot tea on this. Since that arrest, Andrew has cryptically been tweeting here and there, but one of his most recent statements was a share of a video that came from his lawyer. During this interview on Gandal Exclusive, which is a Romanian news source, the Tate brothers' legal representations explains that they went from witnesses to suspects and then to defendants on the evening of December 29th. So, because of their status as witnesses up until around that date, they were unable to study the criminal investigation file and build a defense, so it seems. Also, the change of status to defendants is what the lawyer says led to the arrest of the brothers. The lawyer also says that they only had 45 minutes to study the file before the hearing, which is very, very little time. Usually, defense attorneys or defense teams get much, much longer to review information on the case and the charges. During the police search of the Tate property back in April, there were many things that were seized from them, including computers, laptops, and other electronic equipment. The interviewer asks if any of this property was returned to the Tate brothers while they were considered witnesses in this trial. And now, as many of you understand, the nature of the content on these computers and laptops would be crucial to this case, should the case be about the apparent human trafficking with online sex work that is being alleged, right? Obviously, the search of what was on these electronic devices would be super important. The lawyer explains that since the searches on those devices have been conducted, only some of them have been returned and others are still in custody of the investigation still to this day. For context, again as well, the search and seize was conducted in April 2022 and now we are in January of 2023. The lawyer believes that eight months have been more than enough time to extract the data and evidence from the computers, but does not elaborate on why he thinks they are still being held. The interviewer gets on to asking about the R-word charges, and according to the lawyer, there are two material acts for one of the brothers. She also outrightly asks if there is enough evidence to support the charge. The Tate brothers' lawyer explains that from the beginning until present day, since this particular interview was released on January 9th of 2023, the criminal investigation file was not available to the defense. He also says that he and his legal team are amazed that there is not a single piece of evidence apart from the victim's statement. The evidence that is apparently available in this case is what's called extrajudicial evidence, and this basically means evidence that was not requested by the prosecution. 
In this case, the victim got an analysis from a psychologist of their own choosing and presented it as evidence of trauma. The lawyer says that it shouldn't even really be called expert report because it was just some random psychologist that fit the need of that person. He says that it should be more called a point of view. Long story short, he says that this supposed expert report and psychology analysis was the only evidence presented. And this is what led to the preventative detention for the Tate brothers when they were arrested. Basically, he's calling it all bullshit. The arrest, the evidence that was presented, the fact that he couldn't review the case file until so soon before the hearing, all of it. The victims in the case are two girls, one from America and one from Moldova. The interviewer asks if they are currently still in Romania. The lawyer says in a rather roundabout way that he doesn't know for sure, but it seems that the girls are no longer in the country and that these expert records, quote, were conducted around the time that they left. The lawyer says that basically the situation they're in is, quote, someone throws a bomb, a whole chaos is created, everyone is trying to find the answers. As for the person who threw the bomb, we don't know if he still exists, where he exists, if he still supports this accusation, if he no longer supports his accusation. He says that they have basically asked if they could question the injured parties, that would be the victims, I believe, but so far the prosecution has not answered him on that, or at least he he hasn't expressed a position on that. And just to interject my own thoughts surrounding this real quick, with cases like this, particularly R-word and assault for the victim, standing trial and being questioned by an attorney is very off-putting and can be a big reason as to why a victim doesn't come forward at all. The legal process can be very daunting and scary for someone who has already gone through something incredibly traumatic. I won't comment in either direction in regards to the Tate case as there really isn't much I present in ways of evidence to form a full opinion yet, but I will say specifically on this topic of the victims no longer being in the country and not available for questioning by the defense that that is something that would be beneficial for a victim of assault or R-word. Again, I'm not commenting on the Tate case either way. I'm simply saying that in cases like this where you have a victim that has been hurt this way, it might be better for them psychologically to not be badgered by legal processes as the incident itself was harmful enough. Do you guys know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's continue with the Tate lawyer in you real quick because I have more tea for you on this. The interviewer basically asks the lawyer if he thinks that this case against the Tate brothers might be due to something else that is going on and while the lawyer emphasizes that he doesn't know that he can't help but wonder if that is the case. The lawyer continuously expresses his frustration while talking about this case and brings back the fact that he does not have access to the investigation file and this would be crucial in him forming any type of defense or full understanding of the case overall. And as much as I may not like Andrew Tate, I can understand how not having access to that file does not give the defense a fair shot. The interview continues and explains that because the Tate brothers are American citizens, they are entitled to consular assistance, which would include someone who can translate everything that is going on with the case to the brothers. The lawyer says that while he doesn't want to question the competence of the quote lady translator, the Tate brothers often express that they did not understand and the translations and quote looked at the defense quite scared quite wondering what was going on the lawyer interjected multiple times and asked for a different translator as the brothers didn't seem to understand anything that was being said or the charges being held against them and I'll just have to interject real quick once more. It's a little ironic that the man that can't be controlled and does not live within the matrix and boasts the capability of hopping in a jet and taking off to whatever country he pleases didn't seem to take the time to learn the native language of the country he was stowing away in. I think that might just have been a beneficial move on Andrew's part, but that is just my opinion. The case against the Tate brothers, however, is not just the R-word allegations, as you guys know, but also the charge of human trafficking and organized crime. So the interviewer asks what the evidence might be for that. And the lawyer basically says there is none. He says that the evidence that they have had access to don't accurately describe these offenses. Specifically for the human trafficking charge, he says that there is no evidence of the legal definition of this, that being transportation against will, shelter, coercion, 
decision, and so on. The lawyer offers a rhetorical question to the interviewer, saying, you proposed to me to come to visit me on Romanian authority, you being a Spanish citizen, and I ask you several times, are you sure you want to come? Are you sure you want us to meet? And you also motivate your decision to come and visit me, i.e. the fact that you no longer like Spain since you travel quite a lot and I provide you with the financial means so that we can see each other. Is there any constraint in my transporting you as a person on the territory or Romania? The interviewer says that no, of course not, but what happens next is important. What happens after the transportation is very important. The interviewer says that there have been six complaints against the Tate brothers on this matter. Well, sure, how the victims may have gotten to Romania may not have been within the legal explanation of human trafficking. As she said, what happens afterwards is what is important. The lawyer says that the supposed six complaints are not true and that is all that he can say, that they're just not true. There are complaints to be clear, but it is more than just two, just not as many as six. The lawyer says that there are several statements and these are being presented as victims even though there was no injured party supposedly and no complaint was filed against the Tates. So basically what he's trying to say you guys is that girls have spoken about the Tate brothers on this but people have been presenting these people as victims but seemingly at least in the opinion of this lawyer they're not victims at all. He can't really talk much more about that but however as the case is still ongoing everything he said about that thus far was made mandatory for him to speak on by who he represents being the Tate brothers and has also been public information. The interviewer asks about the Tate brothers' current state while being in custody and the lawyer says that he sees them every day, but it was hard and took some time for them to understand why they were even in custody to begin with. He says that it's been somewhat confusing for them. As was mentioned, they started all of this as witnesses and they were cooperating with law enforcement when it came to seizing their property and their home getting searched, etc. He says that that some items that were seized back in April and then returned were then seized again in December. The lawyer says that there were no new facts in the prosecution, specifically from the first seized to the second, so why come back and take the same items is seemingly the question here, right? He says, if I don't have any new elements, what is the basis of the arrest proposal? The lawyer also points out that the Tate brothers have left Romanian territory numerous times since the sees in April, so I guess he's meaning to say that it shows some shred of innocence that they didn't flee. The lawyer brings up the statements that Andrew has been quoted to say on social media and how it might have had something to do with the judge's decision to move forward with the arrest. I would assume that she's referring to Andrew Tate's old clip that is resurfacing where he says that women are not allowed out while visiting him. Of course, they don't go out. They're not allowed out. Like, oh, Tate's away, so they go out with their friends. No, 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 no. You don't go to the club with your friends. I don't know what kind of bitch-ass dude is letting his chicks go to the club with her friends without him. No. You stay in the house. You don't go nowhere. There are many, many clips like this one that have really fueled the hatred against Andrew Tate, along with his fame, and we've discussed a lot of these at length, but now with the law's eyes on Andrew for really ugly charges, these videos and clips aren't going to be doing him any favors. The interviewer asks the lawyer if there is any regret for these old videos or statements and the lawyer brushes that off saying, I'm not talking about regrets. He goes on to reaffirm one of Andrew's favorite points and that's many things are taken out of context, cut from long form to short form, and that no woman has ever come forward that has been a girlfriend of Andrew's and has ever said that he was a violent man. The lawyer says that we are in 2023 and the personas that are often shown on social media are a character that is built up. He doesn't necessarily think that Andrew Tate is being fake, but rather just pushing what social media might want. So with that, he says that he does not believe a good personal case or moral profile can be made on a person based on who they appear to be on social media. What's more, he reckons that that certainly cannot be used as evidence in a legal trial. What do you guys think about that point specifically? Is Andrew's entire mask 
risk falling off now that this shit is getting real for him. I'd actually like to hear from both Tate fans and the opposition on this, but please don't be an awful person in the comments and don't actually comment. Comment Tate W. Like, actually bring some conversation to the table. With that interview wrapping up, the lawyer confirms the suspicion that many held about Andrew Tate and that's that he in fact does have children in Romania, but he's not married. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but I seem to remember in some other interview or statements that I came across on Andrew that he actually did not want to be so public about his family. So I wonder if he will be okay with the lawyer having mentioned that during this interview. Something is happening on the 10th of this month. I'm not sure if it's the trial or not, but it's seems more information will be out after that, so stay tuned if you guys would like to hear the breakdown of further development on this story. There have also been some headlines that say that one of the Tate brothers were hospitalized while in custody in Romania, and it turns out that that was just a routine check for a pre-existing medical condition that one of the brothers has. And that's about all of the information I can find on that, so the headlines that are yelling about Tate and hospital or whatever aren't being completely genuine with that as whichever one of the brothers went for the checkup is now back in custody. In other news tied to this, however, surely you saw that Aiden Ross immediately jumped to Twitter once the Tate arrest had been announced and stupidly tweeted that Biden pardoned Andrew Tate. But to be honest, besides this being so embarrassing for Aiden, it's also really stupid because should the allegations be true and everything moves forward to prove that Tate did these things, why would they even deserve a pardon? Also, this is happening in Romania. Why would Biden have anything to to do with this. Aiden Ross is just an idiot, but he went further recently and came for Ethan and Ela Klein. Apparently, though, Ethan may have started this feud by talking shit about Aiden during a Hassan stream in regards to Aiden basically defending Andrew Tate amidst all of these allegations. Well, Ethan has responded to this on his own channel in a video titled, Aiden Ross attacked my wife and threatened me. Podcast is like literally like ass, like shit. Like, I can make a podcast and it'll just be so much better. If me, if me and Ant made a podcast, that shit would fucking blow him out the water. Bro, how are you going to make a podcast when you're, like, barely literate? The H3 podcast is currently on break, but that hasn't stopped Ethan from frequently uploading on his own channel. During Aiden's stream, he called Ethan fat, which is a pretty basic insult, but that actually triggered Ethan to take a look at Aiden's body where he says that he's not exactly in the best shape himself. While body shaming is not okay, Ethan says that you shouldn't throw stones in glass houses. And kind of using the words of legendary Drew F. Wallow here, if you open the door for talking shit on people's looks, you kind of have to be prepared to get it back at you. Hey, nigga, bro. Hey, if I see that nigga on the streets, I'm beating his ass. Yo! If I see that nigga in the streets, I'm beating his ass. Fuck, fuck L3, okay? hey, shut up, bitch. You're not doing shit. You're gonna beat my ass if you see me on the street? Shut the fuck up, dude. You're gonna look the other way and pretend like you didn't see me. Ethan says that Aiden seems to surround himself with the worst of the worst and that because he is such an Andrew Tate fan, he and all of his little friends now think that they're kickboxers. But as per usual, it seems that when Ethan is involved in some online drama, people find it necessary to involve Ela as well. Chill out. Yo, yo, you see it? I'm genuinely confused how do they always call my wife ugly like every time and i i talk about this all the time they call me fat and they call Ela ugly. Ethan claps back and says that Aiden has zero life, has no significant other, and the only people who hang out with him are those on his payroll. But Ethan actually holds a theory that Aiden Ross is a fallen fan of H3. You know what it is. We've seen it a thousand times. Ethan, Ethan used to be cool as shit, but he just got weird. I don't know. He just got too weird. But I don't know. Um, he got fat. And his wife's ugly. And then I realized... He's not funny anymore. There is a lot of people that have the opinion that Ethan has changed or become someone who thinks more about how to cater to the opinion of their audience rather than just speaking from the heart on issues. And to be honest, I'm not sure I entirely agree on that because remember that whole top and bottom controversy that happened last year? That certainly was not the actions or behavior of someone who only moves within the fear of being canceled on the internet, to be honest. But anyway, this drama continues with Aiden Ross responding to this in a very meta reaction video that he uploaded within the past 24 hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this video and I'm gonna tell you guys my reaction after when I'm watching it. Aiden runs through Ethan's video and even seems to concede that calling Ethan fat was not cool, but he reckons that due to the reference that Ethan used to kind of call Aiden's fat back, that Ethan watches the stuff that Aiden and 
Andrew make together. Now, this could be a case of secretly being a fan, but I think it's more likely that Ethan has to keep a finger on the pulse of what's happening online as it's his job. I also think that Ethan seems like the type to hate watch. I literally have no evidence to support that. It's just my opinion. Me calling you fat is like that one Spider-Man meme where he points his finger and he points his finger. I, I agree. I agree. So, Ethan, I challenge you to a weight loss journey. Let's both see what we can do. Let's get in the gym and let's let's motivate each other by losing weight. All right? I, I, I won't call you fat. You're right. This will probably become the kind of fake beat that Ethan and Oliver Tree have where it's all show and shtick, but in reality, they don't actually mind either at all. Chill out. See, like, that was out of pocket. I ain't gonna lie. And I even said chill. <gasps> you know, you see it? Like, I'm not gonna lie. That, that, that's out of pocket. I think, you know, his wife got nothing to do with it. Leave her out of it. Okay, so to be honest, beef squashed, right? Um, I'm not apologizing for shit. No, chat. I already, I already addressed that. I'm not apologizing for shit. What I do want to say is, at the end of the day, bro, I think you, you just, we just gotta, we just gotta link up, bro. Let's link up. I want to give you a hug and we could talk. We could sit down and talk. Eden says that past him would have reacted very differently to this video, but he is on a new wave and wants to spread nothing but positivity in 2023 and even offers to meet Ethan somewhere public. But in Ethan fashion, he responded with a video titled, Aiden Ross sent me anthrax in the mail. Obviously satirical, but Ethan actually makes an interesting point in regards to how Aiden seems to cling to men that are like father figures pointing to possible daddy issues. Ethan reckons that this is why Aiden has clung so tightly to Andrew Tate and how possibly Andrew has exploited that. That's neither here nor there and this drama seemingly squashed, but I could see Aiden being a guest on the H3 podcast soon because of all this. And the majority of the comments on Ethan's video seem to agree. We'd love to see your thoughts in the comments down below as always, but for now, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and want to stay up to date, subscribe to the Hot Tea channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, here are some well-deserved eye bleach.